Hey readers, this book is called The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. In this story, a circus ship is traveling to their next circus show, but they run into danger when the ship crashes. The animals must save themselves from drowning and then outsmart the circus boss so that they don't have to return to the circus. Readers, as I read this book, I want you to notice how when I'm reading, I stop and think about the words the author uses and the phrases the author uses to describe how the characters are feeling and why the characters might feel this way. The Circus Ship. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south in fog as thick as stew. Readers, we know the circus ship is traveling across the ocean at night from the illustration, but the author says the circus ship was traveling in fog as thick as stew. I know that when fog is really thick, it is very hard to see. The words thick as stew helps me picture the setting in my mind and gives me a feeling that something bad might happen. They might crash or run into something because they can't see in fog as thick as stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day it was Boston for another circus show. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do! Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two! Readers, the author described the ship captain, Mr. Carrington, as honest and sincere. The author could have said he was kind and nice, but he wrote he was honest and sincere. My feeling is that the ship captain wanted to do the right thing and stop the ship so that they wouldn't crash and wait for the fog to clear so that the animals would be protected. Now it's your turn. I'm going to reread the part where the author describes Mr. Payne, the circus boss. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do! Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two! I want you to turn and tell your buddy what is Mr. Payne like? How do the author's words demanding, stomping, and screaming and the illustration help you describe Mr. Payne? And why might he be feeling this way? Good job, readers. Did you say he's angry because he wants to get to his show and he doesn't want the ship to stop? even though there's bad weather. <gasps> oh no! We knew something bad might happen. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. Oh, all the animals are flying out of the ship. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. Readers, did you have a feeling of dread or worry for the animals after I read that page? The author not only described what was happening in the story, but used phrases to suggest how we should feel. The author wrote the animals were splashing and thrashing round and round and round. Using the picture... How do you think the animals are feeling? Good job, readers. Did you say scared? The captain said to Mr. Payne, pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. 
The animals, yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you, daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. Mm, he's still angry, bossy. Through chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedraggled cold and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. Oh, poor animals. Turn and tell your buddy what does the phrase stagger to the village show about how the animals are feeling? And why might they be feeling this way? Good job, readers. Did you say tired and scared and exhausted because they swam all night long? The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise. And when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant, but wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Soon, animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Mrs. Doty Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for lunch. And Miss Fanny Feeney found, according to the rumors, the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. Readers, the animals have made themselves at home in town, but if I look closely at the faces of the people in the illustrations, some people are scared and some people are angry. I have a feeling they are not happy with the animals, being there. When I look at the picture, this confirms what I'm thinking. But everything changed quickly like the turning of the tide. The night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus days. So he ran past all the people and he leaped into the blaze. Then everybody panicked, help, help, what can we do? When from the raging fire something big burst into view, it was the most amazing sight and everybody froze when they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animal weren't bothersome, the animals were kind. And so they lived together side by side. They got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Readers, the people feel very differently about the animals now compared to when the animals arrived in town. Turn and tell your buddy what happened that changed the people's mind. Then decide, how do you think the people are feeling about the animals now? Good job, readers. Did you say after the tiger saved the little girl, the people like to have the animals around? They're happy with them. They're thankful. They're grateful. Then Little Red the messenger came running with the word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from the, that boat. They swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. 
The next day at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier, and up the lane marched Mr. Payne, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner, my ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came into the center of the town. His face was red, he scratched his head, he stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but he still couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. He ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked the chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. He ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. Readers, the author wrote Mr. Payne ran off in a fit of rage. Think back to the beginning of the story and the words the author used to describe Mr. Payne and his actions. Turn and tell your buddy, how would you describe how Mr. Payne feels? And why do you think he feels this way? Good job, readers. Did you say he feels angry because he can't find his animals? And from that day, they like to say their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine. Readers, we already noticed that Mr. Payne did not change his feelings about the animals at the end of the story, but the townspeople did. How were the townspeople feeling different at the end of the story from the beginning? And why might they feel differently now? Turn and tell your buddy. Good job, readers. Did you say they feel differently because they like having the animals around? They like having them in the town, their friends with them. Readers, today our goal was to stop and think about how the words and phrases the author uses help us describe the characters and the events in the story and how these words add meaning to the story. Today and every day when you're reading independently, you can think about the words the author uses and the phrases the author uses to describe the characters and how they're feeling and why they might be feeling that way.